So we've demonstrated now that we can add a condition that says if we're touching black then bounce back the opposite direction by two pixels and that makes it look like it's either bouncing and you can increase this number in here you can increase this number to any number you like and to create the effect that you want you can make it look like it bounced back and I tend to apply a rule if it's moving in one direction by um, a certain amount say 10 pixels and you want it to look like it's bouncing I get it to go in the opposite direction by twice the number of pixels so it looks like it bounces and it just goes backwards and forwards and bounces um, but for this, the purposes of this game we're looking at here trying to make it look like the green ball is going to move through the maze so the if function or the if conditional or the conditional if you like of if is not strong enough we need it to make have an if or else um, situation so we we can get rid of this this block here and look at this new block down here and what I'm saying here this time is I've added an extra extra block inside the if that says change y by three pixels which means change y by three pixels means go up so again if we look at this block here it says forever change y by x sorry by minus one pixels is always going to be trying to go to the left that's the forever however we add the if which says if you hit something black then do something so change x by two pixels and then go up three pixels so we're telling it to go back up to the right and then go up otherwise if there is no black to touch keep changing x by one pixels and that lo then loops back into the forever so if we put this back in here so you can see that if does want something but the else actually helps us to have another kind of option in there so forever change x by minus one that's the base um, if you're touching black go back in the opposite direction by two pixels and also go up or go north by three pixels so let's have a look and see if this works now so let's click on play here we go going down the alleyway here oh yeah it's going up now it can go left again oh yes touching touching and go left again and so it looks like we've made the ball go through the maze which is pretty cool but you can quickly pretty quickly see that it will only ever go in the one direction it will only ever go up but it, it looks good so you could do another one with another ball and make it go down so you change y by minus three pixels and you look like you're going through different ways but if we look at this if we actually look at this program here there is actually a number of ways that you could go through this maze you could go up like we've just done you could go down like I've just suggested we could modify but you could also go down and then go up and go through or go down and then go up and up and up and then go through or you could go um, down and down and down or you could go up and then across and then down and out and then up and across and across and out and so there's about six different ways that we could get through this maze so we need to now think about writing a program or modifying this program and I hope you can see that we've started with something basic we started off um, and what we're doing is we're adding identifying a problem and then changing it so this is that computational thinking bit I keep going on about we're identifying a problem breaking it down into smaller parts and then solving each problem and making the problem solving a more complex problem by building it up so let's have a look at the next block of code so in this final um, look at these blocks of code to um, uh, get your ball to get through the maze here um, you can see I've taken a load of blocks out and what we're going to look at now is something new so we've looked at the forever option so again all of these blocks have come out of the conditionals here and the loops out of the control block and the sensing blocks here as well as the motion blocks and the events blocks but primarily we're looking at sensing and control but now we're going to look at variables these pink blocks and we're going to look at operators so if we come back to look at this here you can see we still got the base of this we've got on start forever change x by y that is the fundamental part here we want the green ball to get through the maze to the other side um, but we need to obviously it needs to obey the rules of the maze so that's when we've got the if touching so we're going to put that inside here so you understand that we've looked at that already and then we've got this option here these variables and we can make a variable and you can call a variable anything you like so I've called it direction because it helps me understand what I'm trying to do and that just means I want it to decide I want I went what I mean by direction is basically go up or go down 
That's what I mean because I know, given the base the base um, function is always move to the try and move to the left. So now I want I want the program to try and decide whether it's going to go up or down. And so I'm going to use this operator, and there's a whole bunch of operators down here, okay, um, called, and there's one down here, where is it? Pick random. I've missed it, I've gone past it. Math functions, pick random. And you can pick any number. And basically what the, um, the, uh, this, this block here does inside the variables, you can choose a variable here. So, so I'm going to set, and you click on here, drop down box direction, and it puts it in there to pick, um, oh, I'll put this block in the wrong place, this needs to go down here. All right, so get rid of that, that's how I get my set direction. And then we pick up my operator here, and can you see pick random, so I'll just come down here, pick random, and I can drop that in there, and I can set the value to one or two. And the one or two basically means one is up and two is down. That, that's that's all you need to know, but it's going to just pick random from those each time. It can decide either one or two, one or two, 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 one, 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 two, 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 one, or whatever. It's going to decide. And so I can now put this block into here. So we're just saying, if touching black, then set direction to and pick a random one or two. And then we're going to use this if block again. And so we're saying is, it's saying, if touching black, set the direction to pick a random. And they, they, the computer will hold a value of one or two. And then we've got these two if else conditionals here that need to be, and you should recognize that most of the code, but if the bit with the green block is really important. If direction equals one, then, like we did before, change x by three pixels, which is we're gonna bounce back a bit, a bit further than two, and change y by five, in other words, go up. However, if the direction chosen is, or the number chosen is two, then direction two means down, which means look exactly the same, change by three, but this time change y by five. Else, try and go to the left, change x by minus one pixels. And so we can put all of this inside this block here. And that will help us find, or create a way, gotta make these, get these in the right place. Oops, no, it's the wrong place. It's got to go there and that can be a bit tricky so you can see how so that looks very complicated but we started out with on start forever change x by minus one so now let's have a look at this is it going to work for us so down it goes to shoot here it's going to hit the black what's it going to do moving slowly up or down oh it's going up okay cool Okay, so this time it's deciding to go all the way through. That's cool. Nope, it's going to check going down. Could be going down. So can you see we've got this element of randomness in here? So you might find it gets, seems to get stuck, but as soon as it finds white space, there we go. Here we go. It's escaped. So, although it seemed it looked like it was going through um, the way it was did before, if we click stop and do it again, it will go through a different way. Mm, you can't decide. But each time it's changing direction, it's setting that random value to one or two. So it's now, you've got, it's less predictable, and in a game scenario, that's um, an interesting choice to make. So now it's going, going, going left, that's it. Now it's going to, when it hits the new set of black, it can now decide again whether it's going to go up or down. So it will give us, this time it's going to go down. Oh no, it could go up. So hopefully you can see here, I'm going to stop this now, that starting from something very simple, let's, let's, um, stop. Let's drag out this code all the way over here. So we started with a very simple block. We started playing with a forever. That was our that was our first block here. Forever change x by one. Then we added the if touching, gave us a bit more complexity, but it didn't give us what we wanted. It only just stopped. Then we got introduced a sense of choice, if and else, 
And then we added a variable that allowed a random number to be chosen to create um, a, a different set of, an unpredictable set of, of outcomes. So good luck with that. And I'd be interested to see if you can make something like this, but make it more efficient.